One of the biggest challenges that we have in any role, especially sales and insurance specifically, is overcoming objections by people. Now, we don't want to be confrontational with them. It's so easy to try to prove what you know about the products or the solutions and how great they are, but you don't want to be combative because that'll be a big turnoff for people. You want to be persuasive, but not in a bad way. Oftentimes, persuasion sounds like you're trying to coax somebody into something or con them. But if you just be yourself and be honest and be agreeable with people and build relationships and rapport, you don't have to worry about being a sleazy salesperson as long as you're doing it for the right reason. So let me give you an example of like a common objection that we get in insurance. I can't afford it. Now, it's really easy to say, well, you can't afford not to, right? Because that's the, that would be the easiest way to combat that. And the, but that, that might make that person feel uncomfortable, and that sounds pretty cheesy. When somebody says, ah, oh, it's too expensive, I can't afford it, I always agree with them, and I always say, hey, you know what? I totally understand some of the insurance premiums. They can be very expensive. But today, there's a lot of different opportunities where for virtually any budget, you can find a solution. So now I agreed with them, but I didn't be combative with them, and then I offered a backup solution to that. Another uh, common objection we get is like, oh, I don't have time to deal with this. I'm just way too busy right now. Hey, I totally understand. I'm completely slammed myself. My calendar is actually booked out over a week in advance. And maybe your calendar is not quite that way. Uh, right now, currently, our calendar is about three weeks booked out. But you could just say, hey, I completely understand. I'm incredibly busy also. And that's why I want to respect your time and my time. So this conversation is only going to take you know, less than 10 minutes. I just want to conceptually give you the, some ideas and strategies that can help protect you and your family. Do you have 10 minutes sometime during this week, perhaps Tuesday or Thursday morning at 9 or 10, or maybe the afternoon works better for you between 5 and 6? I have a couple slots open. Which one works best for you? So I agreed with them, then I automatically went into my conversation to help try to book a time to get things going again. So think about it. When you get objections, that's a good thing. That means people are engaging with you. Objections are easy to overcome. You just have to listen to them thoroughly and then let the person tell their story, let them get off their chest, whatever it may be, and then you go ahead and you be agreeable with them. You don't say, no, that's not right at all. Actually, this is how it works, okay? For example, I have uh, some clients that say, nope, that's not how it works. This is the way uh, my portfolio works. I go, and you are correct in some aspects. That is exactly how it works. But have you thought about it in this type of way? Have you thought about it in a different fashion? I also I'll agree with them, even though it may be completely inaccurate. I will say, you know, at some extent you are correct. That's how it operates. But let's go a little bit deeper in that. Did you know that the way the index points are starting, the way the crediting methods work, or did you know that the way the market volatility rules or whatever it may be that I'm talking about, I'll still be agreeable up front to be on their side, and then I'll further explain the situation. I'm not going to go right into, hey, no, you're completely wrong. You're crazy. I mean, we have people all the time, like, for example, with uh, long-term care insurance. Oh, I don't need that. I can self-insure. Hey, that's wonderful. And you know what? I'm a big proponent of self-insurance. There's actually two ways to self-insure. Do you know about the two ways? No. How do you, how do you mean? Well, the first way, you could just use your own assets and investments. Uh, some of the challenges with that, though, there could be tax consequences to utilize the funds for the purposes of care because you might have to sell off assets or sell your shares. Uh, the other thing, too, that we don't know is what the value of those assets is going to be in the future. Uh, but there's another opportunity that you can use where you're still self-insuring, you're still using your own money, but you can place it with an insurance company. You can transfer that risk to an insurance company, and they can give you benefits that are 100% income tax-free, uh, great leverage values, sometimes 3, 5 to 10 to 1 of what you place into that back in the form of insurance, and it's all guaranteed. And so there's two ways to do it. The insurance companies aren't going to just give it to you because you're a nice person. You have to pay for it. But those are the two main types of ways that you can self-insure. And I happen to specialize in the asset protection realm, which is the insurance realm. Would you like to learn a little bit more about how it actually operates today? Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? So again, I'm still agreeing with them. They are going to self-insure. There's just literally two different ways to do it. So this is just a, a micro example of the millions of different objections that we get on a on a day to day basis. And the longer that you're in this business, the more that you're going to hear the virtually the same objections. And then you're going to come up with different ways to answer them based on the person's personality, uh, based on their demeanor, all of these different things. So, quick example. I had a client in this morning, a uh, very slow, soft spoken individual and just very methodical, likes to read things. So I didn't, I toned down my own normal energy because usually I'm like, wow, I'm all over the place. But I toned it down a little bit. 
And I said, no, I completely understand. Uh, what type of information would you like to further your research? So I, I try to mimic people. I'm still myself, but I'm mimicking their body language, their tonality, all of these different things that helps me build rapport and seem more relatable to them so I can better serve and help them. 